All right, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. Bible, bodybuilding, backpacking with a bear, slightly anorexic bear. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to do our best to get through Psalm 50 and the, the broad precepts, the generalities, and the hidden mysteries. Best we can. Psalm 50. Lots of songs throughout the Psalms, songs in the Psalms. Today, no exception to that rule. The Mighty One, God the Lord. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons to the earth. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, from Zion perfect in beauty. Anyway, that's, that's the bear's version. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. You want to see beauty? It's not in paintings. Go, go climb a mountain. Go summoning. Go sit next to a river at sundown. Go for a walk at night along a river, along a lake, or a quiet park. At night, look at the stars, Orion, the belt, the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Polaris, the North Star. See if you can find the North Star. See the beauty that God has spread out before us to say, I'm here. If you seek me, I'll seek you. God speaks. You say, God don't speak to you? Repent of your sins. Put your faith, your hope, and your love in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He'll speak to you. Go out at night and look at the stars. He'll be speaking to you. And you can say, wow, God, you're awesome. You seek him, he will seek you. The true God. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined forth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. God is love. God is love. And he will try his very best to show us the wickedness of our sin so that we will turn from our sin and turn unto him and get on the narrow road unto eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. He will try very hard, but he cannot make you because he doesn't want to. And we're not robots or androids. He's going to let us Make the choice. I like the Rush song, Free Will. If you don't make the choice, you've made a choice. I choose free will in Jesus Christ. That's my free will. I choose the Son of God for salvation because I know I'm no good. I'm a dummy. And I need Jesus Christ to help me every step of the way. You might think you're smart. Maybe in your little, your little field that you've chosen... But well, go out in your field. Perhaps you are a, you're a nuclear scientist. Take some classes in electronics, physics, geology, history. Are you that very smart in those clubs? No, you're not. Because we can only grasp so much. But the mighty one, God the Lord, he still calls to us and says, 
I'm here. I know everything. And I know your heart. And if you come to him, he'll spread it out in front of you and say, you're a created being. God has been forever and ever and ever. Can you, can you grasp that? I can't. That's amazing. God our Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God Elohim, has been forever. He wasn't formed. He didn't pop out of an amoeba or rainwater. He always has been. Can we grasp that? No, we can't. We always say, there's got to be a beginning. Chicken or the egg. Okay. So if chickens came from an egg, who laid the egg? You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't keep going down that road. God created the chicken. God created us. God created the world, the universe, and everything in it for his pleasure. And he gave it to us to enjoy. With all that being said, let's get back to our text here. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Truly God is love, but he also will judge sin. And if you stay practicing gross sin for too long, you're going to find yourself in a terrible spot. Can you lose your salvation? Yes, you can. Revelation makes it very clear. Throughout the New Testament, the epistles, there will be no liars in heaven. If you're a perpetual liar, you better stop. If you're an adulterer, you're a perpetual adulterer, and you keep on doing it, yeah, you'll lose your salvation. You're going to be out in the cold. That's a very sad note. I'm sorry to say that, but God will judge. And you know where his judgment starts first? In the household of God with believers. Isn't that interesting? He'll judge us first so that we will turn from our wicked ways. Okay, to get us to stop the sin process. Doesn't mean that we are totally sinless, but he wants us to stop falling down the same gross sin paths we were on when we were in the world. Okay. We do make mistakes. We make bad decisions. We sometimes sin. Sometimes we sin bad. We got to get back up on our feet. I say us, plurally. As a righteous man falls seven times, but he knows he fell, like David, King David. Like us, like Bear here, like you. We fall, but we get up. We get up, and we keep getting up. The righteous man falls seven times and he gets up seven times and says, God, forgive me. I did a stupid thing. Help me to get back on the narrow path to eternity once again. Judgment begins in the household of God, right in our hearts, right here. The temple of the Holy Spirit is those of us that believe in Jesus Christ. That's the household of God. He comes not in buildings, in people. Where two or more are gathered, there he is in the midst. And guess what? Where one is together with the Holy Spirit, we are there with him. And he is with us because he dwells in us. If he doesn't dwell in you, then you're not his child. And that's where you get down the love circle. Put your faith, your hope, and your love in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as you do that, you will put your faith, your hope, and your love in our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, because they are one. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit will join with you in your journey. It's the love circle. Faith, hope, and love. We continue in Psalm 50, chapter 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. We turn off to the pleasures of of this world we don't need to have to we don't need to wanna wanna we don't need the next great asbestos our goal as crank Christians they're cranked Godward and our hearts are inclined 
to him. You cannot love your wife completely, wholeheartedly, until you love Jesus Christ first. That's love. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When you love him first, everything else comes in order. The heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Sometimes he brings tornadoes, judges, states, communities. Sometimes he brings hurricanes, earthquakes, and he judges towns like San Francisco, the beacon of the HMO movement, and the Sodomites. Yeah, not every day, not all the time, but every now and then he shakes the tree. Shakes the apple tree. Certain countries, they get hit with tsunamis, ocean earthquakes, terrible hurricanes. As a remind us that God sits on the throne and he looks over the earth. He's grieved at the sin of mankind and the toleration of gross sin in the church. It grieves his heart. It grieves all of us. But there's another teaching in there. As he is grieved, understand the sin is creeping into the church. The neglect of the word of God and the toleration of all filthy things for the sake of getting numbers. And you call it love. That's not love. You love when you correct people. Like your children. If you don't correct your children when they're doing wrong, where they run out in the street in front of cars, you don't really love them. You correct them so they don't hurt themselves. God does that with the church. Hear, O people, and I will speak, O Israel. And I will testify against thee, I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings, which have been continually before me. In other words, he's saying, that's good. When you come down to the front, to the altars, to pray and cry, that's great. That's wonderful. Praying in tongues, I love it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But as you're doing that, don't think that's going to cover your sin when you're thinking, I'm going to go home and do that sin anyway, or I'm going to go out, or whatever. As you do that, say, them sins I'm leaving behind. You're in adultery, you're going to stop the adultery. You're, you're, you're into looking nasty things on the internet, that's, that's gone. You're going to go home and delete all that trash. Maybe you're smirking, smoking that marijuana stuff to ease the tension in your life. That's going to be gone. Or your, uh, your whiskey. You don't need all that. Your antidepressants. You don't need all that. You need to be in the word of God and let go. Let go and let God take your problems and your suffering. Let go. Let him wash you clean. The disciples didn't need all that trash. And neither do you. Neither do I. Put your faith, your hope, and your love in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He will see you through the rest. And he will lead you day by day. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus, he ain't paving the road before you, showing you the, the magical road. One day at a time. Like the children of Israel, they went out every morning to gather the manna. He told them not to gather more than one day. Every day. Seek, your, seek the word of God every day. Open up your Bibles. Read somewhere, anywhere. A little while, five minutes. Hour, half hour. Read when you're working out. Read when you're at coffee break. Read before bed at night. Read with your family. 
Spend a little time in prayer. Sing a song to the Lord. He is worthy. I'll take the place of your, your need for stimulants. I will take no bull out of thy house or goats out of thy folds, for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. He owns it all. We are facilitators of what he has given us. I know all the fowls in the mountains and the wild beasts of the field. They are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine in the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls and Angus cows, or drink the blood of goats and sheep? Offer to God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You're in trouble financially, physically, mentally, spiritually. Cry out to Jesus Christ. Go there. You don't need to go talk to a priest or all your friends. Sit down on your couch or your chair or at a bus stop or on the bus or on your train or out in the field on a, on a tractor or on your service truck or or up on a lift working on a machine, or on a roof, doing a roof, just stop for a moment and say, Jesus, forgive me. My life is messed up. Forgive me of my sin. Indwell me and wash me clean. And wash me new this day as I continue on the narrow road unto eternity. He'll hear you cry, wherever you're at. Unto the wicked, however, this is the wicked. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the man of the world. It means man that goes to church on Sunday. But he's involved in, he or she, involved in all worldly pleasures. But they play the dress-up club, and they're in, they're in the social clubs. They got money. They put some money in the plate, and they're involved in the Sunday school and all that. But they don't really love Jesus Christ. They don't love the Bible. They don't love the great things that God does. It's a, it's a club to them. Here's the wicked man. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Who are you? You don't love Jesus Christ. You tolerate all wickedness of the earth. You accept it. You approve of it. And yet you show up for church in your nice new church outfit you got just last week. What have you to declare my statutes, God says? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words before thee. Romans, Romans chapter 1, declares to you God hates the Sodom and Gomorrah movement. Look back in Genesis. What did God do with Sodom and Gomorrah? He destroyed it. Men with men, women with women, it's an abomination to God. He will destroy them. And if you as a church say, oh, yes, we welcome you. No, if you do... What does Romans say? It brings a curse to you, to your church. Jesus would declare to you in that toleration, repent. Lest God take his lampstand out of your midst. And then you're no longer a church, you're just a club. A financial club that begs for money and makes a big show, but... You have no love of Jesus Christ or the word of God. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Read the book of Revelation. Read chapter 1 specifically and what's going on in the church. Toleration, accepting Sodom and Gomorrah in the church. You can't. Cannot. It's an abomination to God.
Thou sawest the thief, and you gave him approval. You are partaker with adulterers, you give them approval, because they give money. Money. They toss money in the offering plate. They sponsor your music academy, your award ceremonies. They, they fill your pockets with millions of dollars and say, tolerate this just for the moment and for the sake of love. So they smear the Bible by giving money. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speaketh against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These are people that divide, just for the sheer sake of dividing. We're not talking about church discipline or family discipline. We're talking about people that just like to destroy because they like to destroy. It's not about following God. It's about destroying. These things thou hast done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether as you, but I will reprove thee and set things in order before your eyes. God will make it right. He's going to make the earth right when the rapture of the church happens. He's going to put all of us off of this earth that believe and love him. And then he's going to judge the earth with fire and tribulation. But we're going to be in heaven, praising the Lord, enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those on the earth are those that made the choice not to choose Jesus Christ, worshiping Islamabubs and Hindus and Buddhas and trash and self-pleasures and those will all be left behind. But those of us that love him, we're going to go and be with him. And the tribulation is going to happen on the earth, and we're not going to care, because that's in God's hands. Because whatever God does is fair. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver Whoso ordereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his way and his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. You depressed in your life? Turn it over to Jesus Christ in every shape and faction and way. Every possible way. Jesus Christ, I surrender to me, which is you unto God himself. My all I give to you, Jesus. I surrender mine to you, almighty God. Take it away, for I'm nothing. God speaks to us. Surrender to me, because he's God. Me, my surrender is everything I am because I am, I am a sinner. That's my base form. I came from the womb, a sinner. And I had to learn the precepts of Christ and repent for all the things that I clustered to me. And for years, struggle dropped in and out and in and out and in and out. So God got a hold. And I realized I needed to love the word of God. Love Jesus Christ. Love our Heavenly Father. And let the Holy Spirit move in me and control the bottom line. God says, surrender to me. We therefore say, yes, Lord, to you we surrender. What can we do? He's the creator of the universe. We're going to live 70, 80 years, 100 years, maybe. Top. Some people live to a hundred or so. What is that compared to eternity? Give it up to Jesus Christ. He says, surrender to me. That means him. He's the me. He's God. We're nothing. We are privileged as Christians to become part of his family. By repentance and faith and belief in Jesus Christ. 
Then we get in the happy love circle. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Isn't that a beautiful love circle? Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. And as you love the Father God, you love Jesus Christ. And you love the Holy Spirit. And you get in that love circle. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments in the word of God. That's his commandments. He gave us his word to guide us. To get us on that narrow road to stay in the love circle. Faith, hope, love. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The beautiful love circles. The love circles that last forever and ever and ever. The greatest decision you will ever make is the one that says, I want you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Please take me, Jesus. Best decision you'll ever make, choose, step of faith, whatever you call it. When in your heart you say, yes, I want that. I want that, Jesus. God bless you, friends. See you next time.